In this video, we will learn how to store and organize data on a computer. In particular, we will talk about some common database types. Here, we see an example of a database that contains information about flights. This type of database is called a key value database. Key value databases utilize the concept of dictionaries. Going back to our example, for every flight, we have to store the flight number as the key of the data record. The key uniquely identifies the data record. In the value field, we store the flight route. So what kind of operations can we perform with a key value database? Maybe this is a good point for you to pause the video and think about it for yourself. Typically, we can query the database with a key. If we query our database for the key EDW176, the database returns the flight route, which is from Zurich to Antalya. What else can we do? We can insert additional data records. So here we are inserting the flight AF1415 into our database. Finally, we can also delete records from our database by their key. Here we remove the data record for key BA709. Key value databases are often maintained in memory to speed up operations. Popular key value databases are memcached and Redis. Document databases are an extension of key value databases. These databases allow queries on the content of documents. MongoDB and CouchDB are examples of popular document databases. Often, we want our database to support queries beyond simple key searches. Relational databases allow for more complex questions. You can think of a relational database as a collection of tables. Let's look at an example database. This relational database consists of a single table and contains information about movies. A table then contains rows, which are the data records. The highlighted data record is for the movie JAWS. Now, each data record contains the same fields or columns, that is each data record contains the same kinds of entries. In our case, this is the movie's title, director, and year of release. We highlight the director column in our table. So how do we access our database? Relational databases are accessed with what is known as Structured Query Language or for short, SQL. Some people say SQL instead of SQL. There are some popular open-source SQL database systems. Namely, PostgreSQL and MySQL. Typically, these databases run on a daemon process on a server. Client applications connect to the server and authenticate themselves with their username and password. Thus, multiple users can access the same database. Therefore, we need some form of concurrency control. Alternatively, there are some single-user processing SQL database systems. One example is SQLite, which requires less configuration from developers. Coming back to our table, each column is of one data type. These types are specified by SQL. Can you think of some useful data types for relational databases? So let's go through the SQL data types together and see how many you identified. Character M and character varying M are for fixed and variable length strings of maximum length M respectively. Similarly, we can use bit M and bit varying M for fixed and variable length bit strings of maximum length M. We also have numeric, decimal, integer, and small integer for fixed point and integer numbers. As well as float, real and double precision for floating point numbers. For points in time, we have date, time, and timestamp. And for ranges of time, we have the interval data type. We are now ready to create our own database. We want to create a database for movies. For that, we type the following SQL command, create database movies db. When we execute this command, we create a database with the name movies db. Notice that all SQL statements end with a semicolon. So now that we have created the database, let's create a table in our database. We want to create a table that is called movies, and that has the column's title, director, and year. When we execute this command we have created the table with the corresponding fields. Notice that the data type for the field's title and director is a string of a maximum length of 200. The year field is of data type integer. Our table is empty, so let's insert some data. 
we can insert data records into the movies table with the insert into command. We also specify for which fields we are inserting data. In this case title, director, and year. In this command, we are inserting two records, which we separate with a comma. When we run the command, the rows for the movies, Hancock, and Jaws, will be in our movies table. We were creating our database from the command line. There are also some web-based applications for easy database access. Examples for Postgres QLR, are DBeaver, DataGrip, and PGAdmin. These applications offer you access to databases in a more intuitive manner. For example, if we create a database with multiple tables, these applications allow us to easily see the tables in our database and how they are connected. Let us summarize the main insights of this video. We first looked at key value databases and saw how we can insert, delete, and query data. Then we looked at relational databases. Together we created a relational database and inserted data into the database. Thanks for watching this video.